Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Benjamin Z. Miller Investor Networking Group. Today we've got an interesting presentation on a type of investing called net lease investing. It's common in commercial real estate. We're going to go through how that works and how you can profit from it. So what exactly is net lease investing? Well, if you have seen any large commercial chains, like for example, Walgreens in the United States, the drug company Walgreens, they do not own the buildings that they that they operate out of. They rent those buildings from commercial landlords. And this type of real estate investing can be uh, profitable and it also can be very uh, secure depending on uh, where you're at with uh, with some different things. So with this, the way that it works is um, you actually can take a commercial building, get a lease on it, and then you can earn a long-term profit with it. So it's common in the United States, it's called net lease, and they're designated by single net, double net, triple net. So these are some options for you on that. I'm going to show a few examples here of this type of uh arrangement. We're looking at a, a net lease report. I'll go ahead and show this. This is actually uh, has a few examples of some of some net lease properties. So Dollar General, Taco Bell, AutoZone, Chick-fil-A, these are these are net leases. And you notice here this particular report you can see what's uh, the cap rate on these listings. So 7-Eleven has a cap rate of 4.9. Uh Advanced Auto Part has a 5.95 cap rate. If we look at Bank of America, 5.6%. So what that means is um, if you take the net operating income, but divided by the price that it sells at, it gives you the uh, the price. So um, there's a range on the cap rates. If we look at, say, Buffalo Wild Wings, it has a low of 5.95. It ranges to as high as 8 and a lot of and we'll talk a little bit more about what that actually means in terms of the interpretation in just a little bit here and then i'll i'll stop this recording and i'll take uh, i'll take questions and also we can get to go through a few other things so that's how that that's how that actually uh works out so all right so what determines the value of a commercial property it's easy you just take the net operating income how much income and then you're going to divide it by the price. So if a property has a net operating income of $50,000 a year, you'll divide it by a price of, uh, let's say it happens to sell for a million and you can work out the cap rate. And a lot of new investors, when they hear about this, they think, oh, you know, I want a really high cap rate. Well, we're going to talk about that, some of the dangers of chasing high cap rates in a little bit here. So let's talk about the different types of net leases. The uh, the le the more ends that you see, the uh, the less landlord responsibility. So, if you take the example of a single net, that means that the it requires the tenant to only pay the taxes. So the tenant pays the rent and the taxes in a single net. In a double net, the tenant pays the taxes and the tenant pays the insurance and the tenant pays the rent. And in a triple net, the tenant pays the taxes, the insurance the rent and the maintenance. Uh, but a lot of times in a triple net, a roof may not be included. And then there's another type of net lease that's called an absolute triple net or a bond lease, or what's also sometimes called a hell or high water lease. And in that situation, the tenant is responsible for everything, no matter what happens. Even if the building burns down, the tenant is still responsible for paying the rent. So how does a net lease, how is that better than a bond? Well, a net lease gives you one advantage that you don't get on an investment grade bond, and that is you get depreciation. So you get the tax benefit of depreciation when you have net lease. Uh, we're looking here at a comparison over a 10-year holding period between an investment grade bond and a triple net cap rate. And you notice that the returns on the investment grade bond are lower. Uh, however, you also don't get any depreciation. So you miss out on that as well. So why do these big companies, why do they rent instead of buy? I mean, they've got plenty of money. Why don't they just buy the real estate? 
Well, that is a great question. And the reason is because they're looking at the rate of return. They're not in the real estate business. They're in the coffee business or they're in the drug business. And for that reason, they stick to their core business. But that creates an opportunity for commercial landlords. Here we see an example of a high quality tenant. And I'm going to show you real clearly why chasing high cap rates can be dangerous in the next slide. But let's take the example of a triple net on McDonald's. This is a real listing. Notice that cap rate's only 3.85, which that 3.85% cap rate it suggests that the that the net operating income on it's 63,872. And that would mean that if you were to purchase this for 1.659 million, you could expect to get 63,872 in annual income uh, and monthly payments of 5323. So that's how that works. But now let's compare that to a higher cap rate. So here we've got a 3.85%. Now I'm going to show you a high cap rate. Here's a 25% cap rate. And I want you to notice this because a lot of new investors, when they first bump into this, they make a mistake where they want to chase a high cap rate because they think, well, I want income. I want more income. So I want a higher cap rate. That's as far as their thinking goes. But you change the risk profile because you're no longer dealing with McDonald's as your tenant when you start chasing a higher cap rate. So a low cap rate, you've got McDonald's. Move to a high cap rate. This is an absurdly high cap rate, 25%. Now, all of a sudden, you have uh, a tenant that is not McDonald's. It's a non-credit tenant. That means that uh, it's just maybe a sole proprietor, maybe it's a small businessman that's operating it. But look at this deal. This, this deal is saying buy this building for 800,000 and you can get a 25% cap rate. Well, all that glitters is not gold, folks. And basically with this, you're being promised that the income the property is going to generate is 200,000. Wow, that sounds great. But who exactly is your tenant? Well, your tenant is a firework stand. And that may not be the most reliable tenant. It may not be the most reliable. So you've got to be careful because you might pay, purchase this building for 800,000. Maybe you get a few rent payments and then all of a sudden the business goes out and you don't have anything else you can do. Now let's look at it from the other side. What if you're more interested in arranging deals or creating values you need to understand how the value can change on a commercial property tremendously. So look at this illustration on the left. It shows an empty building with no tenant. That building might have a value of 400,000. Now I want you to imagine that you bought this building and you put a sign out that says for rent and you got a plumber that called up and said, hey, I've got a plumbing company and I wanna rent this. I'll pay you $10,000 a month. If that plumbing company signs a lease, the value of your building increases from maybe 400,000 to 600,000, maybe even 800,000. But you notice you got a great jump there. But what about if instead of a plumbing company, which is a non-credit tenant, what about if you hit the jackpot where you had actually a, uh, where if you had actually Dollar General, which is a credit tenant, a corporation with, with good, solid corporate credit that rented that. Well, that building could move from 400000 to $1.6 million in value with the stroke of a pen by the action of Dollar General leasing your building. So there's some big, big rewards if you can buy a vacant building or a location and then you can get a credit tenant to lease it. But that's a, that's a thing that most people are not aware of. The advantage to net lease is you get rental income, no landlord responsibilities. The tenant often has to pay for the taxes and the insurance. So, you know, there's a, a, a letter of intent. I'm not going to go through this whole thing in the presentation now, but I'll email the slide deck where you can look at it. But it basically shows how this sort of a deal goes down. Uh, are they syndicated? Yes. Net lease deals are often syndicated. Um, what sort of investors like NetLease? There's two categories. The first category is older investors that they are wanting to get a higher return than a bond, but they need security, they need safety. So an older 
retired couple could be a candidate for a net lease deal. The other type of investor that is out there in the net lease worlds are pension funds. Uh, a lot of pension funds, they like net lease because it lets them purchase trophy assets. So they're not concerned about getting a high rate of return. They're more concerned with just getting a secure, solid, long-term rate. Couple of reminders. If you look in the chat window, I ask you to please look in the chat window. You should see a red icon. Just uh, fill out that Excel spreadsheet with your information so that we can email you a copy of the presentation and you'll also get uh, the list of other investors. And then you're welcome to contact any of the investors on the list and they're welcome to contact you. Um, if you're interested in investing and you want to learn more, feel if you're watching this out on the internet, feel free to reach out to me. I love to help uh, new investors. And that is it for our presentation. I'm gonna stop the recording and then uh, I'll take any questions.